This whiskey costs thirty thousand dollars. It's a single malt. Single malt whiskey is one of the most revered spirits in the world. It's exclusively made from barley, which is quite a cheap product. So how does one bottle get to be so expensive? Over the past 50 years, single malts have become increasingly popular. Scottish single malt exports grew by 14.2% in 2017, to just over $1.5 billion. One of the main players in the single malt market is Glenfiddich, whose parent company achieved a £1.2 billion turnover last year. Selling 1.2 million um, nine litre cases of, of uh, Glenfiddich around the world. We have 180 markets around the world that we gen generally service. In 1963, we started to commercially uh, sell single malt, but also to promote it actively outside of Scotland for the public. We give the single malt category the biggest push it's ever had in its life. We were fortunate enough to try a 12 year old bottle worth $36 and a 50-year-old vintage worth $30,000. Nice, sweet, soft. The 12-year-old whiskey was certainly sweet and pleasant to drink, but I was expecting the more expensive bottle to taste out of this world to justify its price. Oh, wow. Really distinct. You can taste much more European oak in this one. The, the distinction between the flavours, like if it's a lot smoother, a lot oakier. There seems to be truth that the longer the alcohol is in there, the smoother it tastes, so the more deserving of the expensive price. But that can't be the only thing that justifies one bottle being close to $29,000 more than another. Another reason is that making single malt is an extremely difficult process to get right. Barley is ground down and added to spring water. Heated to 64 degrees Celsius, it turns to sugar, dissolving into a fine sweet tangy liquid called wort. The wort is drained, cooled and passed into wash bags. This is heated and condensed in copper wash stills for its first distillation, and a second time in spirit stills. The spirit trickles into the spirit safe, ready for maturation, and then it's batched in casks with spring water. Casks spend years in the warehouse, maturing into a single malt. So the secret to the quality of single malt is consistency. You've got to nail down your, your production so that your new make spirit comes off exactly the same. And, and we have a spirit quality team that are actively looking at and we also know the new make spirit on site as well. But there's more. An age 30 maturation can have 30 to 40% of the alcohol evaporated in the barrel or 1% each year of the whiskey's life. This is because of something called angel share the natural evaporation of the liquid into the atmosphere over time. So older whiskies are expensive not just because they're old, but because there's less of them left. There's one more factor we haven't touched upon yet, status. It's, it's all about the equity of the brand, the perception of the consumer about how much they're prepared to pay for our brands. I think in general younger people want quality, they want good shoes, good clothes, nice cars, nice houses, and they want to be drinking single malt. And it's not just store-bought bottles. One factor that's driving up the price of single malts is a booming collector's market. A bottle of the Macallan 1926 60-year-old recently sold for $1.5 million in auction, marking the largest single sale ever for a bottle. Christie's International Director of Wine, Tim Tiptree, oversaw the sale. So it was one of 40 bottles produced from uh, a single cask that was uh, distilled in 1926 and then bottled in 1986 was a hand-painted bottle. So, uh, so I think it does um, add a little to the desirability, but um, it's the intrinsic quality of the whisky inside the bottle that um, is driving the demand. But Scotch has some serious competitors. Alongside China, India, Taiwan, Ireland, Japan is one of the world's major producers of unblended whiskies. For relaxing times, make it Suntory time. You might have heard of Suntory time. Suntory owned the Yamazaki distillery in Osaka prefecture, 
The rarity of their produce drove prices sky high. And the Japanese have come to the fore about four or five years ago. One of their whiskies, a Yamazaki, was made and best whisky in the world. And that created a lot of noise around the Yamazaki and single malt. But Yamazaki is owned by Suntory, and the bulk of what they produce goes to blends. So they had insufficient whisky in their warehouses to actually continue on the success of what Yamazaki achieved in that one year. What dictates the price, the value of a whisky sometimes, is the exclusivity. So the less there was, it, it drove the price up to the point where Yamazaki was being sold off at three, four times the, the normal value. But blended whiskies can also reach quite a high price. Will they ever be as expensive as single malt? We don't predominantly sell um, much blended whiskies in, in our um, auctions. The single malts are much more rare, they're much more individualistic, so uh, whereas blended whiskies is, is typically sort of generally more um, produced in larger volumes and also is more uh, homogenous in, in the actual style and, uh, and taste profile.